Hey Kraken fans and hey hockey fans, welcome back to the channel. Mike here, Sasquatch NHL. Glad to have you guys by for a quick update today. We're going to talk a little bit about possible captain scenarios for the Seattle Kraken as they head into season two. We've got training camp starting here in less than a week at the Kraken Community Iceplex. Uh, so this is a topic, again, it's been talked about a little bit through the offseason, various channels, and you know, it, it's come it's come to the forefront here as we head towards training camp. I feel like maybe the timing is right here with camp arriving and the season right around the corner. Uh, and tis the season for captaincy talk. We've had a couple of things break here in the last couple of days we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, but glad to have you guys by the channel. Kind of been feeling inspired a little bit lately uh, by Shannon over there at, you know, the hockey guy. Of course, I'm sure you're familiar, but he does a lot of his videos in one take. So I'm trying to go this for this update, trying to do a little bit of a more conversational tone uh, and try to get through it. In one take, we'll see. I might do a little bit of editing, but if you're a content creator or, or you know one, you know that editing is not probably their favorite thing to do. Uh, uh, but like I said, a little more conversational tone, a little more laid back. That also lends itself nicely to kind of an audio-friendly format, which, by the way, in case you miss, missed it, I did launch the podcast version of Sasquatch NHL here in the last couple of weeks. So, you know, maybe you don't always want to watch on, on YouTube or, you know, maybe you want to take these updates and in, in your interviews and and episodes and such along with you uh so it's available now on all the major platforms so go follow rate like over there on your favorite podcast apps on apple or spotify google or whatever you use uh to consume podcast content It'd be a great honor uh to be part of your rotation like i've said on twitter um so yeah go ahead hit that like button subscribe button right here on youtube uh while you're here it goes a long way to help support the channel here in the show and continues to allow me to bring you guys content as we go into season two of Seattle Kraken coming up here real quick. So let's get into it today. Let's discuss. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment. Who will you, who do you think is going to be the next captain? How do you think the scenario is going to go? Who are going to be the alternates? Uh, similar to last year, I think we've got some great leadership on the team and we're going to have to see who rises to the forefront here. So last season, going back, obviously we had Mark Giordano, an extremely tough year, year one, uh, I thought Gio provided a lot of really steady leadership, uh, definitely a class act throughout the season, leading all the way up to his trade over to Toronto there at the deadline. I thought he did a great, you know, great job, uh, kind of embodied the tone of leadership that the Kraken wanted for year one. So we fast forward, obviously, to today. Um, and just on the heels of some pretty big news here, a couple of teams, Montreal, uh, naming Nick Suzuki as their captain. He's 23 years old, so he's going to the forefront of, le of leadership there uh, in Montreal. Also, just this morning, news broke. The Winnipeg Jets are going to enter their season without a captain uh, and go with just a group of alternates. Reports kind of indicated that they wanted a new voice uh, of leadership there, not necessarily an indictment against Blake Wheeler, but nonetheless, Wheeler will step out of that role as captain and remain with the team have to see how things go there. That can get very interesting, right? So the Kraken kind of in a similar spot here as we head into camp. The question looming, who's going to be the next captain? It's been asked quite a bit by the media and covered by, you know, the podcasts and, and all the content uh, creators around the, uh, the city here. So it's just definitely at the front of my mind. And I kind of wanted to put my two cents into the pile here, just with the timing in mind and season two coming. Uh, I kind of see a couple of different scenarios that could play out here. So let's talk about it. For the Kraken, as they announce a captain at some point, I see three scenarios the way I've broken it down. Uh, scenario one, they're probably, and I think this is the most likely scenario, they're probably going to announce something during camp uh, or right around the conclusion as we go into the beginning of the season. And I think in that case, if they go kind of in this scenario one, like during camp or, or right after the conclusion, you'll likely see a veteran named uh, somebody with experience, okay? Second scenario, it's going to be maybe later in the season as the team kind of bonds and further develops and, and gains that identity. I think a little bit further out, that starts to increase the likelihood of maybe a younger guy stepping up into the leadership role uh, and grabbing the reins uh, for the future. Scenario three now. Scenario three now would be the Kraken not naming a captain at all. Uh, they go through the whole season and it gets established sometime in the off season. Uh, you know, the, during the summer next year. So I don't know. I, like I said, I think the longer we go, it becomes more and more likely that a, a younger guy, uh, you know, someone possibly like Shane Wright or, or Matty Beniers, I, I would lean a little more towards Shane Wright in that category. 
uh, being eventually named as captain. Uh, but in either case, I think Ron Francis wants to see, you know, who's going to take the reins and establish that leadership and identity as the Kraken kind of learn who they are. Uh, so I would be really surprised to see an announcement before next week when camp starts, but more likely during camp or, or right at the conclusion of the preseason. So, okay, let's talk about the possible candidates, right? And some things to consider along the way too. Last year, we obviously had Gio as captain. We had the rotating alternates. We had Adam Larson, Yanni Gord, Jordan Eberly, and Jaden Schwartz, right? So um, with kind of keeping this in mind, we don't really know what happens in the locker room. Uh, despite who we think should be captain and, and who the fan favorites are and so on and so forth, there's definitely that element of unknown uh, due to the kind of secretive nature of what goes on behind closed doors in the locker room. And and even more so last year because reporters didn't have as much access uh, during COVID protocols. So we might get a little bit more of a glimpse this year uh, behind some of the closed conversations and doors and things going on in the locker room. But generally, we are left to speculate in that area. Sometimes you're going to get a, you know, a super vocal, like a loud, inspirational type captain. Uh, sometimes you're going to get somebody that's a little more quiet, uh, more of an actions speak louder than words type of guy, guys that show up in a work day in, day out. Uh, Patrick Marlowe comes to mind. Seattle's very familiar with him, his years as captain in San Jose. Definitely not a vocal guy, uh, just led by example and uh, just worked his tail off. Pretty consistent performer and nothing but respect and class uh, from him through the years. So in either case, it's going to be a person that embodies the overall spirit of the team on and off the ice. There's community involvement, definitely a big factor. Uh, somebody that's got that steady, reliable, responsible personality that exemplifies your organization. So that's a big key part of it during potentially, you know, some tough years, uh, some struggles that an expansion team is going to go through. Kind of a similar arc, um, you know, maybe, you know, Hackstall, for as much as we give him a hard time uh, for a strategy and, and things like that, he, he is pretty emotionless. He doesn't get too high. It doesn't get too low. And, you know, if you want to put that out there as one of his better qualities, you know, he's not yelling and screaming at press conferences and throwing guys under the bus and so on and so forth. So, like I said, for all the th all the things that we criticize Hackstall about, he has been a pretty good, steady, calming, even keel guy uh, as the youngsters kind of develop on this team. So with all that in mind, okay, finally, here's kind of my list of players and player types on the Seattle Kraken who could be named captain. My favorite, and I think the guy leading uh, as far as, you know, outside perception, the guy I think is going to be named captain is Yanni Gord. Uh, it's been kind of heavily hinted, it put out there that he could step into that role. He's definitely been out front for interviews and et cetera through the off season. He's been featured a lot on social media. Uh, the crowd loves him. I still remember the the response he got going back to fan appreciation night there at Climate Pledge Arena in, in season one. Uh, the crowd just roared for him after the game. It really said a lot about how the community feels about him and just, you know, energizes that crowd for sure. He's got the experience, uh, you know, his resume. He's 30 years old, 101 goals career, 134 assists. That's good for 235 points. He also has 264 penalty minutes, so he's not afraid to kind of mix it up, uh, you know, get dirty, get down there, and, uh, you know, go after it with the opponents. So that's definitely a quality you want your captain to have. If you go back to his years with the Tampa Bay Lightning, obviously he's a two-time Stanley Cup champion. That is going to be invaluable experience under your belt as a captain and leading a team, especially a young team. He was instrumental, I thought, really in both of those cup runs. I watched him pretty closely. Uh, he had seven goals, seven assists, uh, for, good for 14 points in that run in 2020. Also two game-winning goals in that run. Uh, and the next year when they won back-to-back, -back, six goals, one assist, seven total points there. Also two game-winning goals in 2021. So really great playoff performances from Yanni Gord those years they won the Cup. Uh, plays that hard-nosed, in-your-face kind of, you know, that brand of hockey that commands respect. He holds opponents and uh, teammates accountable uh, he's, you know, as far as contract goes, he's in the midst of a six year contract, keeping him with the Kraken through 24, uh, 20, 2024, 2025, just definitely, you know, he checks all the boxes as far as being a really good choice for wearing the C on the sweater for the Seattle Kraken. So that's kind of my top pick. Uh, my favorite, if I, if I was getting the vote there in the locker room, that would be where my vote goes. But, uh, I, 
like all of us, we are outsiders. We'll have to see how it plays out. Category two, okay? That's kind of this maybe of a, more of a surprise pick, maybe a younger pick for the future. Uh, and the name that comes to mind, depending on how things go in camp and development-wise, is Shane Wright. Obviously, you know, young gun. Uh, and even though he's young, then absolutely no experience at the NHL level just yet. There is definitely some precedent there already, right? So go back to May 2021. Wright was named captain of Team Canada for the IIHF Under-18 World Championships. Uh, despite being the youngest player on the team there, they went on to win that championship. They beat Russia uh, there in the final and won the trophy in gold. So pretty impressive stuff there. Later that year in October, Wright uh, was named captain of his OHL team there in Kingston. So like I said, a little bit of precedent. He definitely kind of bubbles to the top as far as you know, taking on that leadership role for the teams that he's been a part of so far. So something to keep an eye on there. And as far as, you know, historically at the NHL level, uh, it's not unprecedented to see a younger guy named captain after, you know, a little bit of experience under their belt. Uh, and that's why I think as time goes by, if, if, it's, if the announcement doesn't come uh, and we go into the season or even towards the end of the season, I think that they're going to go with the younger guy in that scenario. Um, some other guys, you know, that did it when they were young, obviously Connor McDavid, right? 19 years old when he was named captain, the youngest captain in NHL history at that time. Uh, you know, he was just amazing talent and he's definitely established his leadership role on that team. And at the time, he it just felt like he was ready for it. I remember when they named him. Another guy there for Tampa Bay back in the day, Vincent LeCavier, 19 years old when he was named captain. And also a number one overall pick when he entered the league. Huge expectations for him. He had a little bit of a slower um, rookie year, you know, not quite as spectacular as McDavid, but uh, they still named him captain the following season. He actually was captain along with two others there. They had three captains on the team. I didn't realize that was possible until I kind of read back through the history on this, but um, he actually he got his captaincy taken away um, and he didn't get it back until 2008 2009 and then he maintained that role throughout the rest of his his contract there with Tampa Bay so kind of an interesting story there with uh Vincent LeCavalier uh, another guy Sidney Crosby I'm not sure if you've ever heard of him for the Pittsburgh Penguins he was named captain at 20 years old uh and during his first two years on the team with Pittsburgh they didn't have a captain so again it's very possible that the Kraken hold off and don't name anyone captain here throughout this season and maybe it happens next year or maybe a year after that. So definitely in the realm of possibility. One other note there with Sidney Crosby, he is also the youngest captain to win a Stanley Cup. Uh, he was 21 years old uh, when they won it against Detroit in 2009. So kind of cool historical note there. And a couple other guys here, Gabriel Landeskog, Colorado Avalanche. They just won the Stanley Cup. He was named captain when he was 20. Um, you know, he kind of burst onto the scene, had a really... Really great first season, but was also a responsible player, two-way player for the Avs. Uh, and we talked about this with Shalena Goldman a little bit, and, and that's how she kind of described Shane Wright, a responsible player, reliable two-way player. So we'll, we'll kind of keep an eye on this. Uh, finally, Jonathan Tate, Chicago Blackhawks. He was also 20 years old. You know, he just went on to win three Stanley Cups in six years. <laughs> no big deal there. But um, so, well, I, you know, I think it's a little bit unlikely the crack and go that route. It's definitely not unprecedented, though. And uh, But it would be more of a move for the future. It kind of would further signal Ron Francis and his desired direction for the leadership on the team to be, to be younger uh, and more forward, um, you know, forward future thinking as far as that goes. Okay, so finally, I, I like what we have here. We call them... I guess we call them the dark horses, but honestly, no one would be surprised if any of these guys in this category were named captain uh, if they were selected. These are established guys, experienced guys. They're all very well respected. They're kind of the journeyman type, maybe a little bit quieter in their approach to leadership, uh, but you know, nonetheless, still would be effective leaders. These are guys that were most, I think all of them were rotating captains last or alternates last year. Jordan Eberly, Jaden Schwartz, and Ar uh, Adam Larson there. Um, Starting with Eberly, I think he's probably at the top of this list in this tier, at least. He's very experienced. Um, he's probably going to hit 900 games this season. I think he's at 800 and 858 games, according to my notes here. Uh, also a first round pick when the Oilers took him back in 2008. Career-wise, 262 goals, 333 assists, 
that's good for 595 career points overall. Uh, just last season with Seattle, he had 21 goals, 23 assists, so a real you know, steady offensive producer there for the Kraken in a tough year. He has seen a lot in his time, starting out there with Edmonton. Didn't perform re, uh, you know, super well during the playoffs in his last year with the team, which kind of led to uh, the trade to the Islanders, uh, where he flipped the script a bit with them in the playoffs, had some good performances. The Islanders had some good runs there in the playoffs. Uh, and, and now, you know, settling in with Seattle, uh, we'll just kind of have to see it, how it goes with Jordan Eberle, but definitely a good candidate for captain. Not my top pick, but definitely a good pick overall. Uh, just my opinion there. Jaden Schwartz, another guy, nearly 600 games under his belt. He's getting up there. Uh, he was an alternate captain for the Kraken in season one. He went so far in his career, he's had 162 goals, 246 assists. That's good for 408 points overall. He did struggle to stay healthy a little bit last season. Uh, so, you know, maybe that's going to be a factor in the decision making. We'll just have to see how he goes, how his camp goes, uh, and whether or not he's going to bubble to the top and take on the captaincy role. Finally, Adam Larson, maybe maybe the biggest dark horse in this group. Uh, you know, pretty quiet guy, Mr. Deep V with the t-shirts there. Uh, that steady anchor on the back end, really calming presence. I think he's going to be key in helping develop some of the younger defensemen that are going to come through eventually in Seattle. Career-wise, you know, not flashy numbers or anything like that, but uh, going back, he was picked by New Jersey in 2014, fourth overall. So he's been through you know, being a high selection and, you know, moving around a little bit. Uh, he was traded to the Oilers in 2016 and remained there until Seattle picked him up in the expansion draft, of course. So great group of guys there. I, I wouldn't be disappointed with any of them being named captain, but going back to, uh, you know, overall, I think it's probably going to be Yanni Gord. Now it's okay. So it's always also fun to imagine maybe a goalie being your captain, right? Yeah. <laughs> We've talked and joked about this on Twitter a little bit, and uh, you know it's been put out there. Maybe Gru could be the captain of this team, but actually, I think the guys over at the Kraken Pog talked about this a bit. Um, but the goalie uh, having Gru as your goalie captain is, is uh, you know, extremely unlikely. There have only been six of them named captain in the history of the league. There's logistical issues there. Uh, you know, there the captain is expected to be the main voice, the liaison to the referee during you know, on ice discussions or calls and explanations and kind of decisions being made over there uh, where the officials talk with the players. But, and that's why the rule was put in to prevent this because they didn't want the goalie coming out and slowing the game down and having to take time to skate out to talk to the referees and so on and so forth. But anyhow, kind of fun to think about. Definitely not going to happen. Uh, Roberto Luongo there, the Vancouver Canucks, the last guy to be named captain as goalie. He couldn't wear the C on the sweater, of course, so he painted it on his helmet. And uh, But again, I, I don't think that is going to happen. It would be kind of entertaining, but very, very unlikely. But Okay, so wrapping up a little bit. Again, my pick for captain is going to be Yanni Gord. I think he would be you know, checking all of the boxes that I see needed to be captain. He's a fan favorite. Uh, great interview. I've loved the content that some of the other channels have put out with the interviews with him. And uh, yeah, so we'll just have to see what happens. Camp starts up. That's going to be it for today's update. I can't wait to provide some more updates. You know, maybe like I said, we'll do a hack stall video here in the coming days. I would love to hear from you guys again in the comments. Give me your rationale. Who's going to be captain and why? Uh, and Or, you know, maybe a surprise pick here or there that I haven't covered. I would love to hear from you guys. And I try to reply to all the comments when I've got time to do so. So thanks a lot. Oh, by the way, uh, don't forget we've got that Kraken podcast trivia battle coming up between Emerald City Hockey and the guys at the Kraken Pod, formerly known as What Lies Beneath. Uh, so don't forget about that. We've actually got a date set for it. It's going to be October 5th at 5 p.m. So save the date, put it on your calendars, mark it down. You don't want to miss that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully I'm going to be able to do a giveaway that night too. And and uh, just, you know, it should be very entertaining and would love to have you guys along for that. So again, training camp getting going here at the Kraken Community Iceplex. That starts Thursday, September 22nd. And then preseason is going to kick off September 26th. That's a Monday live at Climate Pledge Arena. I think I'm going to be at the game on the 27th. So maybe if I see you guys in the concourse, say hi. We'll grab a beer or something like that. But 
I've got more updates coming for you guys. And of course, my morning, uh, my morning segment uh, that I do, Morning Cup of Kraken, that's going to be back real soon here. So keep your eyes out for that. Uh, you know, go ahead, hit like, subscribe, hit alerts for the live streams. You know, head over to the podcast channels, follow, rate, and like over there on your favorite app, whether it's Apple, Spotify, or Google. Would love to have your guys' support there. I always appreciate it. So that's going to do it for uh, today, guys. Thanks again. Let me know in the comments what you think. Who's going to be the next captain? We'll talk to you soon on another stream here soon.